At this moment, more than 42,000 immigrants are being held by our government in detention centers across the United States. They are not serving criminal sentences. Instead, most of them are locked up because they are fighting deportation, awaiting decisions on whether they can remain in this country. My husband was one of them. Before he was taken into custody, I knew next to nothing about immigration detention. But once he was detained, our lives became a nightmare. One of the most difficult things for me is how the suffering of families caught in immigration detention is invisible to the general public. The detention and deportation system in the U.S. is vast and ever-growing. As my husband and I were caught within it, I saw that detention sweeps up people from all walks of life. In fact, I learned that anyone who is not a citizen could be detained by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. Many people in detention have lived here for decades and have children and family members who are U.S. citizens. Others have left everything behind and made the dangerous journey here to ask for asylum in exactly the way the law tells them to do. And many are living here with legal status but end up in detention because of contact with the criminal justice system, no matter how long ago or how minor. One of those people is Astrid, a green card holder and mother of three. In 2013, ICE showed up at her door to take her into custody. The reason? Nearly 20 years before, she had been convicted of a minor drug offense for which she served only probation. She ultimately won her immigration case, but detention separated her from her young children for two and a half years. The government calls people like Astrid criminal aliens, but this label is so broad that it includes people with criminal records as minor as speeding or jumping a turnstile, and now, under President Trump, even those who do not have criminal records at all. Overall, more than 50% of all immigrants facing deportation ultimately win the right to stay in this country. But in many places, if a person is in detention, their chance at winning their case drops to less than 10%. That's because detention makes it much harder to access the lawyers, experts, and family members you need to effectively fight your case. A person in detention is shackled behind bars, monitored by armed guards, and thrown in solitary confinement for minor infractions. And they are often held in the very same facilities as people serving time for crimes. Despite being in the same prisons and jails, immigrants do not share the same basic rights, such as a right to a court-appointed lawyer. Many immigrants also do not have the right to a hearing where a judge can determine whether they should even be detained. This forces them to make an excruciating choice, fight their case and continue to suffer in detention for months and often years, or accept deportation in order to escape the hell of detention. Some choose deportation, even though they have strong cases, simply because conditions in detention are so intolerable that they cannot bear the thought of spending another day behind bars. People detained are frequently subjected to rancid food, substandard medical care, and sexual and physical abuse. Some never receive access to fresh air and direct sunlight. Why are conditions in immigration detention facilities so bad? It all comes down to profit. Over 70% of immigrants are held in facilities that are run by private prison companies. These companies have capitalized on racism and xenophobia and treat human beings like commodities. They spend millions of dollars lobbying for more immigration enforcement, and they have been so successful that in 2009, Congress set a quota requiring ICE to maintain 34,000 detention beds at all times. Not because of need or security, but to line the pockets of prison companies. This has led to an explosion in the use of detention. We now imprison more immigrants than ever before, at a cost of over $2 billion a year roughly 5 million per day. And who is footing the bill for this quota? Us, the taxpayers. Immigration detention is inhumane, costly, and unnecessary. As I visited my husband in detention, I learned I was not alone. I've joined a growing movement fighting to end this practice.